What's up, YouTube land? My name is Laura Whitmore, and I am the owner and master instructor at Strategic Test Prep LLC. I'm here today to show you an amazing top secret strategy to help boost your math score instantaneously by at least 50 points. It's called Nice Numbers, and I'm going to show you how it works. So what does a 50 point boost entail on the math for the SAT anyways? There's 58 questions total between sections three and four. So roughly you need to get six more questions correct to get a higher score of about 50 points. That is completely doable with the strategy that I'm gonna show you today. So looking at this number 12, you can see that there's variables in the problem and in the answer choices. Now, instead of using synthetic division or long division, all you need to do is just make it tangible by picking a number for X. So in this case, the easiest thing to do is keep X as a small number because you're on the no calculator section on this problem. So I'm gonna make X two. You wanna avoid using zero or one because they're funky numbers. Zero in the denominator is undefined. One is the identity property of my multiplication. So don't use those because you might get some weird answers. But we're gonna make X2 and then we'll substitute it in to the problem. Now when we use PEMDAS and we simplify, we end up getting 28 over 10. And I already know this because I did this problem. But make sure you show your work. Don't take a shortcut like me. Just take my word for it. So you get 28 tenths. Leave it as an improper fraction. Don't reduce it. Now you can take what you put for X to and put them into all the answers until one matches. The one that matches the 28 tenths is an equivalent expression. We know it's not A and B, so I'm gonna cross those off. We don't even get a fraction with A and B. My suggestion is start with D because typically on these problems, they like to bury the answer at the bottom. So you'll save time if you start with D and work your way up. We'll substitute two in for X. And we end up with three minus two tenths. Well, when we get a common denominator, that's 30 tenths minus two tenths. And lo and behold, we get the same answer that we got in the problem. So the answer is D. Quicker, more efficient, tangible. I understand what 28 tenths is. I really can't visualize what 4X squared plus 6X over 4X plus two means. So it's just a quicker, easier way to get the answer. Now let's look at one more problem. So 29, as you, this was actually a question from the October 2021 SAT. So this was issued to my students. They went in and took this test last year in October. As you can see, it's a word problem and it's labeled a hard. It's the second to last question on section four. But again, you have a variable in the problem, which is awesome because you also have it in the answer choices. So you can use nice numbers. The problem says a quantity is decreased by 45% of its value. The resulting value is X. Which expression gives the value of the original quantity in terms of X? So since they want the value of the original quantity, we have to pick a number to start with for the original quantity. So if we're dealing with percents, the best thing to start with is 100. It's easy to take 45% off 100. So I'm gonna make my quantity 100, and then I know if it's decreased by 45%, 30, oh, gotta do my math here, 55% remains. So that means um, I'm gonna multiply 100 by 55%, so I get 55. Remember, if it's a decrease, you multiply by what remains. So if I take 45% away, which is 45 for 100, I have 55 left. That's my magic number in this case. That's what I'm looking for in the answer choices. So 55 is X, because it says the resulting value is X. We're gonna put 55 into all the answers for X till we get back to the original value, which was 100. So I'm gonna do 55 divided by 0.45. 
I think I'm gonna need a calculator for this. Now please don't judge me. This is a TI-83. Yes, I was cheap and I bought it on eBay. I know there's way cooler calculators out there. I just didn't care enough. All right, let's see. So I'm gonna start with D, right? Because they like to bury the answer and work my way up. So I'm gonna do 55 divided by 1.55 and I get 35, so that doesn't work. So let me try 55 divided by 1.45. I get 37, that doesn't work. Let me try 55 divided by 0.55. Oh, I get 100, so the answer is B. So that's nice numbers in a nutshell. If you have variables, don't try to think it out. It's so super abstract, it'll get super confusing. Throw some numbers in, easy numbers that make sense. Try not to use zero and one. If it's a percent, go with 100 and you'll get at least five or six more problems right. So go ahead and give this a try, practice it on your own, and have this in your toolbox for the next test you take.